Hey, my name is James Wilkinson and welcome to my YouTube channel. Inflation data is out. It's not as good as what we're expecting. We've got updates from the Bank of England and much, much more. Well, what does this mean for interest rates? Because that's the real focus on this channel, at least. When are the interest rates going to come down? Well, we've got some updates on that. We've got some updates on what the market thinks and where is inflation moving towards? And is it going as well as it could be? Well, the answer to that one is a quick no. So before we jump into this, as always, if you haven't done already, make, do make sure you subscribe to the channel over there and hit that bell notification. We've got new content every single day on this channel. In fact, we're probably the only property channel that does that. We'll talk about interest rates, house prices, strategy for buying and acquiring properties and much more. And while you're here, smash the like button, tickle the like button, do something to the like button. Don't get upset about being asked about that like some of you do. It really helps grow the channel. I appreciate everyone that does that. And by doing that, it pushes this message out to more people. So take a moment to do that very quickly. So what is going on with inflation? Well, we've got new figures out today and it's not as good as what we're expecting. However, it is a 30 month low, which is good, I guess. We're moving in the right direction for sure. Just could be a little bit faster. So inflation has gone from 3.4% down to 3.2%. So a big drop, but forecasts were that it would hit 3.1%. So it is moving in the right direction. So what is going on? Now, this is the lowest that we've had inflation since 2021, which is good. And this is now lower than the USA inflation. So we're moving in the right direction for sure. They were actually doing uh, significantly better than us for a while, but we've caught up. We're not quite as good as Europe. Eurozone is uh, in the 2% range. Germany, France, other places are doing better than us. And in fact, significantly better than us, it has to be said. Uh, and so that is what we're going to talk about today. What is down and what does this mean for interest rates? So what else is going on in this? So core inflation um, is, is down. And this is where you strip away the food costs and the energy costs. And so core inflation is down from 4.5 to 4.2. So that's moving in the right direction. However, this is what they get more worried about, the core inflation number uh, than the average. And, and so service inflation is one that they talk about. They've been talking about this for quite a few months now. They really were worried about service inflation getting out of control while Normal inflation and the rest of all these things that they measure were coming down. Services were getting a little bit out of control. That leads to wage spirals and wage price inflation as well. So that's something that they do want to keep an eye on. And service inflation uh, is also down, but it's still well above the 2% target. So service inflation has gone from 61 to 6%, hardly down at all, which is not great. So that's what they're talking about. They're looking at these sorts of figures and saying, right, can we drop interest rates yet? Or do we need all of these things to make sure that they're going to move down uh, in the right direction? Now, this is good and bad, this next stat, and that's wages. So wages are actually up more than inflation, 3.2. And so wages are up at 5.6. Now, I think that's great because people's income, the affordability of just buying their weekly shop, paying their rent, paying their mortgage, has dramatically decreased over the last couple of years. And so this is helping them catch up a little bit. It might not feel like it, but it is definitely making a difference. My partner, Katie, sent me a message today. Our... Uh, direct debit for our gas, and I don't know if it's for our gas electric, I, I think it's for both, uh, has gone from £300 a month down to 220 So other people will start to see that stuff happen as well. And if they get a pay rise, this will start to feel like we're moving in the right direction. And that's what we want, uh, is sentiment to feel like we're moving in the right direction and affordability to basically improve. That's very, very important. Um, and so the Bank of England has come out with 
after this data and they've had an interesting uh, few days. They've been talking about the fact that they might actually drop rates before the Federal Reserve. I've said a lot on this channel and it's common knowledge and this is just normally what happens. The Bank of England normally follow the Fed. You see our currencies are so intertwined, the pound and the dollar. We don't want to slash interest rates here when America keeps them high because the dollar will get stronger in that scenario and then everything that we import, because a lot of it's paid for in dollars, will become more expensive and our inflation will shoot back up again. It's a difficult balancing act that they've got to do. But the Bank of England has said this week that they wouldn't be opposed to going first with interest rate cuts. That's positive news. They don't really say that. The Bank of England like to keep everything very, very close to their chest. So the fact that they're talking about interest rate cuts is good. Now, some other data came out this week. I don't know the exact number, but I do know that the unemployment rate went up. And that might be the reason that the Bank of England is now getting a little worried about have they over tightened. Uh, because when they put interest rates up and inflation drops, you're seeing that it's getting more restrictive. It's tougher for people. So as inflation drops, as the rates stay high, it is getting harder for people financially. Uh, there's a gap there that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you over tighten, then it can take a little while for, to let that off. And so they might be considering rate cuts. So what does the market think? Because they have billions or trillions invested in what happens at the Bank of England. And so the market feels that the Bank of England is going to cut rates this year, but they put that back. And so traders are saying a rate cut will likely be September or November. I don't think there's an October meeting. The November meeting is very, very early uh, this year. And, and so that's when they're feeling that rates will now be cut, which is pushed back again, which means... Possibly we get one rate cut this year, which is not really what we want to see. And that's down to the fact that inflation is sticking around. Now, what does this mean for house prices? Well, I feel that as inflation is high, that means affordability is actually improving. In real terms, house prices are being eroded in value by 3.2% every single year. So affordability is going up, wages are going up, and also, the, the mortgage rates are basically sticking the same. So it is getting slightly more affordable. So potentially, house prices might not go down as much as what people were expecting. So what do you feel about inflation this week? Let me know in the comments. Do you think that it's going to drop significantly? They said the next month is expected to be really close to that 2% target. We were expecting a bigger drop this month due to energy costs that we pay, like I said, my partner and I, we've saved 80 quid a month now, which is a fair amount of money uh, for a lot of people. And I'm sure lots of people have got similar messages like that, um, but it's still sticking around at that 3.2. Let me know, where do you think this all ends up? Smash the like button, do share this video with friends and family, and go and check out some more content on my channel, including this video right here.